It seems to be piling up in those shallows. By the way, Happy New Year. Thank you, sir. Same to you. What's its speed? 60 knots, sir. It must be mountainous. Fort Bow, keep a sharp watch. Yes, sir. Get my binoculars. Captain? Look out. What is it, look out? On the port bow. I don't know. I, I never saw anything like it. An enormous wall of water coming towards us. Happy New Year and welcome to Book Versus Movie. This is a podcast where we read books that have been adapted into movies and then we try to decide which we like better, the book or the movie. I am Margot P. of ColoniaBook.com and this is my good friend and co-host Margot D. of Brooklyn Fit Chick. Hi everyone. Happy New Year! Yay! Yay! (laughs) (laughs) We are recording this on January 1st, 2021. You know, we're both still locked up in our homes, <laughs> but, but very happy to welcome a new year. Now, for those of you who are new, a couple things I think we, we need to mention. Number one, we're both named Margo. I am on the West Coast in San Diego, and Margo D is on the East Coast in Brooklyn. We are not experts in mm-hmm. books or movies. We just uh, like talking about them. And uh, sometimes we and we're we are, we're very opinionated. So sometimes mm-hmm. our opinions aren't the opinions of our of our listeners. But, uh, but nevertheless, we, we try to keep it jovial around here, and we spoil a lot. Mm-hmm. So if you are tuning in to hear about a, a book or a movie that you have not read or have not seen, be prepared to hear all the details of how it turns out and what we think about it. But uh, (laughs) before we get into today's book and movie, we want to mention there's a couple of places where you can interact with us on the internet and other listeners of this podcast. Yes, because we're always looking for suggestions. We've been doing this show for, it's going to be seven years now, Margo, this year. We're always looking, I know, ever since we went into stay-at-home orders, uh, that's uh, this past March, we've been doing a weekly show. So we've expanded to also be magazine articles and plays and novellas, you know, just anything that has to be adapted. So if you have ideas or suggestions, you can follow us. We have a basic Facebook page, but that's where we just post the episodes. We have a Facebook group where a lot of people like to interact and offer suggestions. It is a private group. But it's also a very nice group. There's no yelling or anything going on there. It's just about books and movies. So just to type in Book VS Movie Podcast Group in Facebook. Or you can send us a tweet. On Twitter, we're at Book Versus a Movie. Spell that out. You can send it to us via DM on Instagram. We're on regular Instagram. It's just Book Versus Movie Podcast. We also have an old timey email. It's Book Versus Movie Podcast. Spell that all out at gmail.com. And we also have stickers. If you would like some stickers, let us know. Now, we also have a Patreon account, and we've, we've picked up a couple of new Patreon supporters. 
Yes, we have Kristen and Allison that just joined. Thank you both so much for doing that. So Margaret and I have been doing the show for seven years. We have about 70 episodes on our Patreon page because for a lot of podcast apps, they only go back maybe a year or two for your episodes. We got a lot of them there and there's a $1, $3 and $5 option. If you want to check it out, the $3 and $5 options, you can have access to those old shows. There's lots of free episodes there too. So just if you want to check it out. Also, if you have ideas for books and movies and you wonder if we've done them before, Definitely check out the Patreon page because there's a lot of them there. And you just go to Patreon, P A T R E O N, and look for Book VS Movie Podcast. And we appreciate everything because we're an independent podcast. We're not part of a big network. So all this money really does go back directly into the show. Now, today's book and movie is The Poseidon Adventure. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Spoiler alert movie. Uh, <laughs> but. Uh, but it was it was I will say it was very fun reading the book, although I, I believe, Margo, you listened to it on Audible, did you not? Yes, we do have an Audible promotion. So you just go to audibletrial.com forward slash book versus movie and you get a free month to check it out yourself. I started to read the book. It is available on Kindle and about halfway through. I almost threw my Kindle out the window. I got very upset about the chapter. <laughs> And so I said, you know what, I'm going to go to the, it's abridged, and it's Dylan Baker, the actor, doing the audio narration for it. And they have sound effects and stuff like that. It was much more palatable, is that how you pronounce the word, for me to do it that way, to do it that way. Yes. So so it has sound effects. Yeah. I mean, just a little bit like ocean sounds and things like that. Yeah. Okay. You know, it takes out. Some of the skeevier stuff that Margo and I will be talking about in a minute. Uh, I, 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 like, I should say, uh, by the way, like, like a trigger warning yes. for this book. We we mentioned this only I think only one t- time before, and then be the warriors. We talked about that. They're in this yeah. book, and then, well, we'll get we'll just get to the story. But there's a trigger warning if there's a sexual assault that is discussed, uh, mentioned. If there's a story around it, and it's you know upsetting to say the least. So, but we'll get yeah. to that. Yes. I'm, thank you for mentioning that. Uh, there was a lot of stuff that was upsetting about this book. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was probably the, the most egregious, yeah, the, 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 the worst, the, the, the bottom of the, of of the many. experience yeah. um, of many, of many. But, you know, again, we it's a short it's a short list, but we mm-hmm. there is a list. We have a list of times that the movie is better than the book. And this is one of those times. <laughs> so we're going to be talking about <laughs> the Poseidon Adventure. You know, sometimes though, a, a crappy book or a, a problematic book has a kernel of a good story in there. So, you know, we've had a lot of, you know, our classic example is Jaws, which is, has a lot of very problematic uh, scenes uh, in the book. Which made a terrific movie. And, and we have, like I said, we have a little short list of, of really awesome movies that were made out of really not awesome literary sources. This book, I think, was quite a quite a hit, though, when it came out. It's much more, there's a lot that's been cut out of the book. If you're familiar with the movie, there's a lot of plot lines, a lot of characters um, that thankfully were cut out of the book and not included in the movie. It's a lot of big differences, but of course, the main thrust of the story, if you will, is you have this doomed voyage and uh and there's some there is you know some good kind of narrative fodder in there that makes a a pretty pretty fun movie to watch but uh but let's let's go over this book well should we talk about the author (laughs) first we should talk about the author yeah okay so (laughs) let's talk about the author his name is paul gallico he's born in new york city 1897 1897 excuse me and he started his career as a writer for the new york daily news he funnily enough was started writing movie reviews and then he was so snarky that they put him on the sports desk and yeah. he was a very successful writer, sports writer. He wrote Lou Gehrig, Pride of the Yankees, which became the movie Pride of the Yankees. He's written many, mm-hmm. many, many, many books over the years, many scripts, many telescripts. I mean, he's he also was a traveler. He went all around the U.S. for uh, 50,000 miles going across the U.S. for Reader's Digest for a year and a half. Fascinating guys, traveled all over the world. Mm-hmm. And in 1969, he wrote The Poseidon Adventure. Before that, he had something called The Snow Goose, which I don't really know much about. 
but that was his big success before the Poseidon Adventure. In addition to all the other things that he's done, he was married four times. He's not in the five-time club. He's in the four-time club. And he (laughs) passed away in Antibes, France, in 1976. He was, like I said, very successful. This novel actually wasn't that big of a hit. It wasn't until it was a movie a couple of years later that it really took off. Yeah. You know, I, 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 I don't know where to begin with this. He's a very well-known author, and he's written some really great stuff. Although, you know, like Lou Gehrig was written in the, I think, in the 40s. The 40s? Mm-hmm. And, and Snow Goose, his other big hit, was also written in the 40s. It's a love story set against the backdrop of, um, of war. Um, this book, I don't know, man. First <laughs> of all, just, just from like, okay. Let's just put aside the plot and the storylines for a second and just like on a purely structural point of view here. The whole – the book has like a many, many characters as the movie does if you're familiar with the movie. There's a lot of characters. And the whole – at least the first chapter of the book is like nothing but exposition about these characters but, you know, the – from the very beginning, the female characters are very uh, cartoonish at best, but it's very like, here's the priest and this is what he believes. Here's the cop and this is his point of view. Here's the kid and this, this she's got a kid brother and, and this is their worldview. It's just bubba da bubba da bubba da ba, character, 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 character. Nobody could possibly keep track of all of these people. Mm-hmm. Um, it's very ham handed. I mean, it's, I just, ugh. It's like, the racism it's like the, to me the racism from the i think in the first chapter i think in the first chapter yeah with the racism yeah um, the cop homophobia yes Ugh. misogyny sexism and, and misogyny anti-semitism and sexism for the whole thing oh yes indeed anti-semitism as well <laughs> i mean i don't know sometimes these themes come up in books you know, like when we talked recently about the front page, mm-hmm. sometimes these themes come up. Uh, characters say these things in the books to illustrate the misguidedness of these points of view and mm-hmm. these philosophies. I'm not so sure that that's what's going on here. <laughs> um, it's it's very it's very sloppy. I feel I found it very clumsy and very sloppy. The whole opening of like just shoving these characters in my face one after the other. It was it's like to me. The book is the worst episode of The Love Boat ever. <laughs> That's saying something. And the movie might be the most exciting episode of The Love Boat ever. You remember in The Love Boat, like the whole first three minutes of The Love Boat is everybody coming on the ship. And you learn what all of their stories are as they're walking the gangplank up to the ship to meet the cruise director, Julie. Mm-hmm. It's very that. All of these people um, in the movie the, have been on The Love Boat, by the way. And sexism. <laughs> they have. <laughs> so... Um, so you have okay. So let's go over who the characters are because some transfer to the movie and some don't. Where to begin? Oh, we have, we have you have the, the, the police detective. Yes, you go. Oh, ahead. You have the Reverend Scott. You have the Reverend Scott, and then there's a second Reverend, right? Mm-hmm. There's two clergymen. Scott, of course, is the one who becomes the main the main character. You have the Shelby family in the movie. There's this uh, girl, Susan. And her kid brother, who she's in charge of, Robin, and they're on a cruise to get home to their parents for some reason. Um, in the book, the entire Shelby family is on the ship. You have the cop, Mike Rogo, and his wife, mm-hmm. whose name I'm forgetting all of a sudden. Linda. Um, you have this character called the Beamer. Yeah, Linda, thank you. You have this character called Beamer, mm-hmm. who's like a playboy, and you have it, this – he's – drunk like the whole time and he's got this girl he's hitting on the whole time it's ugh. let's see who else do you have the bell the rosens you have the rosens mm-hmm. who are traveling to israel to uh to meet their grandchild their first grandchild there's a turk a turkish is he turkish yes there who's not in the movie at all you have you have the doctor. Oh gosh, I'm you forgetting nurse, people already. Um, there's oh, yes, Noni, there's a doctor, you know. who's in a band, but in, in oh, the movie yes. she's in a band, but in the book she's it's a can-can group. It's more of a sexy girl dance kind of group. Right. 
There's um, there's another woman that has a crush on the Bieber. There's a guy that's a part of a motor company. I mean, there's a, like he's Margo said. There's a, there's a hairdresser. There's all kinds of oh, people. Yeah. And a hairdresser. Yeah, and then you have the crew itself. Right. So so the basic plot of the book and the movie is this: you have this old ship, this old ship called the Poseidon. It was. A beautiful ocean liner. Um, now it's sort of in semi-retirement. It's a li- ocean liner slash cargo ship. It is on one of its like final voyages or mm-hmm. one of its newest voyages under a new ownership. There's this new owner because of the cargo, not because of its cruise. The so it's half cargo, half cruise line because of the cargo. You know, more businessy part of the of what the ship's supposed to be doing on the sea, um, the company is rushing, rushing, rushing the the crew to get the ship to its destination, which I think is Greece, as soon as possible. And in order to be as fast as possible, the company, not the crew, but the company overrides safety measures and says, don't take on ballast. You know, we need you lights. So you can get over there lightning fast. And so don't take on any ballast. And so when what happens is there's an earthquake under the ocean, which happens all the time. It leads to a massive tidal wave, mm-hmm. which doesn't always happen, but sometimes. And because the ship has not is not properly weighted down, it gets capsized by the wave. And you have everybody, you know, first of all, people instantly die because of boat flips over. Um, and you have these parties of people trying to decide what is the most safest option for survival you know do we stay put and wait for people to find help because they have called for help do we try to find our way you know up to the now the the bottom of the ship which is now the top of the ship what do we do and so they kind of faction off into these different factions Um, again this is a little bit different from the movie so this the reverend takes this group of people including the turk uh, including susan and her brother and the parents and the rosens and the cop and his wife And they are a party that are going to – they're deciding to go to the hull of the ship, which is now at the very tippy top. Mm -hmm. Um, But a large group also decides to stay behind with the crew who actually understand how the ship is built and what it does. They decide to stay behind with the crew in the dining area. Right. And we follow follow the the people who go with the the reverend and through – and we'll get into some of the events that are in the book that are not in the movie, but, but I'm just giving you the broad strokes here. They go through all these adventures trying to get up to the, the, the hull of the ship. By the time they get to the hull of the ship in the book, they've been through such hell, all of them, that the little boy, Robin, is dead. Right. He has disappeared. He is dead. Everybody is naked. Yes. Everybody is naked and covered in filth. Okay. Nobody's everybody is Everyone. naked and, and they get to the top and the rescue team finds them. And in the book, when the rescue team pulls them out of the ship, they see all kinds of other people who have been rescued from the ship, including the people who decided to stay behind in the dining room, who apparently are perfectly fine. Yeah. Like they're still in their They're still in their fancy clothes from the New Year's party and everything. There's all kinds of other people who were did not go through hell. And are also being rescued. <laughs> it's it doesn't make any so they're and naked. The the, yeah, and is it Susan yeah. or or Susan is the one who is assaulted? Well, first of all, Linda and yeah. Mike. Um, he's a racist cop, and he says the most horrible things, and they yell at each other all the time. And Linda is they, the least like likable character ever. She is a harpy. Yeah. She's annoying. You're meant to hate her. You are meant to just have all no connection women- to her are so badly drawn and she has a one note harpy. Yes. Just like Margo's saying, she never stops complaining. Mm-hmm. She never stops talking about how much she hates her husband and how much she regrets marrying him. And then we have the Rosens and they're it's, it's this very Jewish stereotype of an old Jewish oh, couple, which, you know, there's cringy. a character so cringy. And at the end, one of the characters is like, I'm almost feeling feelings for them. I'm almost forgetting that they're Jewish. It says this. Exactly. Ugh. Uh, and then we have what happens to Susan Shelby, who's a teenager. And I'll just be 
I'll I'll try to be as ugh, whatever. She yeah. is ass- sexually assaulted, and the rape scene is written by a, a member of the crew. Right. Well, see, she doesn't know who right. it is because it's dark. And then as she's right. she's sort of trying to figure it out as it happens. And I, you know, it's it's trauma. You know, you freeze or you you flight right. or fight or whatever. Like she's processing. Then she realizes he's a young, young man that's on that works for the ship. He gets upset, not because he raped her, but he, because he raped a passenger. He was really hoping to get a maid. And yeah, he starts so, crying. Uh, so then she's trying to soothe this, his feelings. Because she feels bad that he feels bad now because he might get fired for what he did to a passenger. Her. <sighs> yeah. And then do they have sex yeah. later? Do they have like a, they have like a. No. No. No, no. What happens is it's just such, it's, it's gross. so messed up. So yeah, he rapes her. He feels remorse. Just like Margo said, not for the rape, but that he raped a passenger who is like a person. <laughs> right. Not like. <laughs> another not like a woman who just works on the ship you know and she's like oh you poor thing and she, she feels sorry for him and he dies yes he dies like right after that at the end oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. of the book uh, he is being uh, she she eventually she gets back to her family she doesn't tell anybody what happened and throughout the rest of the book, she finds herself like thinking fondly of her rapist. And then as she's like the, at the end of the book, her little epilogue is that she's hoping like maybe she's pregnant and maybe she'll go to the part of England where he said he was from and like meet his family. Like what? Yeah, she's going to go to Leeds oh. and bring a baby boy to them because they lost a son now because that's the real tragedy. And say what? I, I, you know. And say what? And say what, hon? <laughs> I I honestly I was just like there are a couple of like Margaret there's sex scenes in this book that are just like ugh. I mean that's not a sex scene that's a rape scene but there's a couple of sex scenes yeah. that are really gross but the like the the way these people speak to each other it's just not how humans be they just become depraved in no time right yeah and I and I and yet I don't feel like the book is about that right because they start out that way. If, you know, it's it's like, of course, that's what's going to happen. The the cop's wife who never stops complaining, um, her complaining gets she loses her grip on. The, she gets impaled mm-hmm. on it. It's just so gross. And um, and then they she, it's this awful, disgusting scene, which they then bring up again and again and again and again. Uh, I, I mean, yeah, I, I mean, exactly. It's, at some point, it's just like ugh. and then and then. Like you finally get to the end of this book and you're like, okay, finally, you know, they're off the ship. They're being rescued. We can get all like relax now. Oh no, 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 no. We're not through with the, with the xenophobia. Like they, they're apparently there's like multiple crews that show up to rescue these people who would have died um, without them. Yeah. And one of them is from, is a German crew. And so I forget who it is on the ship on the on the rescue boat with the people we've been following is shouting at the German crew, you know, because they have like leftover resentment about World War Two. I mean, it's just it's ridiculous. Just a, I mean, it was just it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. It's it's unnecessarily it's everything. It's unnecessarily everything. Yes, it is. <laughs> Was like I was so glad to be finished with this book. I just and I just don't understand why. First of all, why why are you writing this book, sir? I don't know. And he's a good writer, obviously, but I this is not a good book. It's not a good book. But it is an interesting idea, you know the you know the broader themes of the recklessness of you know these these capitalists who are Mm -hmm. uh you know knowingly risking lives to make a buck um and what happens when you you have these relationships that can put in this very extreme situation and um what does that do to your sense of you know if to your sense of of god if you're a clergyman or your sense of family if you're you a happily married couple going to see your grandchild for the first time. You know, it, it's so so the broader strokes of it are very are intriguing, but the execution is um, 
<sighs> not fun. No, it's just an ugly little book. It's just ugly. Mm-hmm. It's just yeah. like I said, I almost threw my Kindle out the window. I was so angry. I was so upset. It yeah. was much easier for me to deal with the story when it was just Dylan Baker reading it. But even then, like I can imagine uh-huh. he was must have been a few times like, you really want me to say this? I it's they abridged the text, oh. but there's still like, yeah, it's got this slimy kind of film to it. Yes, it was written over 50 years ago. We totally get that. But right. that, but yeah, I just I couldn't after a while. I was just so anyway, can we stop talking about the book and then go to the movie? Yeah, let's do. All right. So <laughs> I'm going to play a trailer. It's uh, it's the official trailer from the time. And then we'll go right into the Poseidon adventure, the movie. What does it look at? I never saw anything like it. An enormous wall of water coming towards us. In the early morning hours of New Year's Eve, Gene Hackman, Ernest Borgnine, Red Buttons, Carol Lindley, Roddy McDowell, Stella Stevens, Shelley Winters, Jack Albertson, Pamela Sue Martin, Arthur O'Connell, Eric Shea, and Leslie Nielsen were aboard the SS Poseidon when it was hit by a 90-foot tidal wave. Oh, my God. And capsized. The Poseidon Adventure exciting escape adventure of our time. Follow me! It took the lives of the 1,400 people on board and changed the lives of the few who would survive. Climbing to another deck will kill you all! And sitting on our butts is not going to save us either! Don't look down! Something that I know how to do. Please, you just gotta let me do. You're going the wrong way, damn it! Who do you think you are? God himself? That's the way out. The combined talents of 15 Academy Award winners bring you Irwin Allen's production of The Poseidon Adventure, a Ronald Neen film coming from 20th Century Fox. I love the I just love these movies that were Irwin Allen films in the 70s. I don't know if you remember them, yeah. Margo, because they just were these big, outlandish productions. And this is just... He just did everything yes. big. First of all, I am a huge fan of um, some of his television work, Lost in Space. I loved Lost oh, yeah. in Space. I loved Land of the Giants. I love Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea. Um, he's also known for the Towering Inferno, if you've ever seen that. Love um, it. Yes, I, I, he does every huge. Yes, huge. So he's our, he produces this. Our director is Ronald Neem. And this cast is just incredible. I mean, the Oscar winners that are in this, uh, we have Gene Hackman, Ernest Borgnine, Rhett Buttons, Carol Lindley, Shelley Winters, Roddy McDowell, Stella Stevens, Stella Stevens, excuse me, Jack Albertson, Pamela Sue Martin, uh, she will always be Nancy Drew to me, and Leslie Nielsen, and Eric Shea, who played a kid in like every movie up to the point of airplane. He was in everything. <laughs> yeah. And it's the same thing here. He was in everything. He was in everything. And it's the same like there the, the, with the book, but it just they just pare everything down. We just have a few stories. And it's, I mean, Gene Hackman just won an Oscar for The French Connection. And then he went and did this. People just did that yeah. back then. Like they just, you know, they just, a, yeah. a part is a part. And he plays a very angry preacher who really, like he says, God doesn't like losers. Yeah. <laughs> He's he's very I know. And and what I literally like, which is kind of true in the book, too, that's sort of the character that that is in the book as well. But what I liked about the movie was like he's he's preaching his point of view. And the the other clergyman on the book is like in the movie. I'm sorry, is like, sheesh, man, (laughs) give it a rest. Not everybody's Iron Man. Can you Calm down. <laughs> <laughs> he has a ton of energy. He's Gene Hackman on his Gene Hackman-ness. I mean, he's just like, he's he's yelling. His throat yeah. must have been, his vocal cords must have been killing him by the end of this production. Boy, it's a lot of yelling. whole lot Gene of yelling Hackman. from Gene. Um, yeah. He looks great, too. I think this is like when he, he looks does. his best. He just, it's like the agree. 70s perm kind of thing going on. I like it. I'm liking it very much. Yep, I'm there for it. Yeah. I, I mean, the whole thing is so fun. Um, again, this is like... The best, like, of if if 
Love Boat ever did like a dark dramatic episode, this would be like the best of that. Ernest Borgnine. <sighs> Have we talked about him a, before? I love him. I was trying to think if we've ever done Ernest Borgnine. I don't believe we have. I know, which is a shame um, because I love him. Jesus Christ, what happened? We've turned over. It's okay. Linda? It's okay. Linda, honey, you all right? Hi. Hey. Where the hell have you been? What do you think? Flying around on my ass. He's wonderful. He is absolutely wonderful. He's great. I think this is a great role for him as the cop. I think that's great. I love, I totally forgot. I'm not the biggest Red Buttons fan, but I think he's great in this. No, he's wonderful. I think he's a great character. This character is not in the book, really. This, right. he, he's sort of a pastiche character. Of, he's got like little bits of this and that character from the book. But I love the choice of, in the 70s, for those of you who are not around then, um, there was this whole like macrobiotic uh, <laughs> wheatgrass, 18 vitamins before every meal, yep. wheatgrass, earth shoes, movement of people who thought they were going to, you know, jog their way to the age of 100. And he he's playing that kind of a role. But I feel like he, again, Maybe it's a direction thing with red buttons. Like sometimes I, I like him fine and sometimes I'm like, ugh. Yeah. But I really love he really brought like a real depth to this guy. I, I thought it was a really good performance. I thought it was wonderful. I mean, I love him and I love Jack Albertson and Shelley Winters as the Rosens. Aren't they I love them together. We talked about Jack Albertson when we talked about Willy Wonka and the Chocolate oh, Factory. Yes. yes. He plays he plays the grandpa. Uh, did we ever do Lolita? No, and I don't want to. No, No, it's a difficult, it's a very difficult book to get through. Yes. Um, But I absolutely adore Shelley Winters. I think she is so underrated. I think she's Um, wonderful too. I loved her in Roseanne. She was great on Roseanne. Yeah. And I, she was nominated uh, for an Oscar for this role. I think deservingly so. I Mm -hmm. think what she does with this role from the very beginning, um, when you very first meet the Rosens, sh- you know they they have a, a believable relationship, and you really buy not just the love that they have for each other, that, that they have this history, that they've really gone through some stuff. Mm-hmm. I mean, I just really bought it. She gained thirty five pounds. She said just to get the part. I'm as old as Shelley Winters, by the way, as she was at this time. Like that old lady on the screen, that everybody keeps yelling that she's old. I'm like, holy shit, that's me now. But she's aged up. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she's aged up, by the way. Yes. But yeah, 50 used to look a lot different, everybody. But she's she used to be a swimmer. And uh, Shelley Winters took lessons and like would wear like a scuba suits in her backyard and took lessons in diving. So that it would be really believable. So at one point she rescues everyone. Yeah, and it's super. Ble- but she's funny and she's self-effacing. And I mean, it. There's like I said, there's a lot of yelling in this movie. She's, but there's also some humorous moments, and she just kind of provides for both. Oh, she's absolutely brilliant in this. I just, I could watch this just watching her. And speaking of aging up, Leslie Nielsen, <laughs> who you know. The, our generation thinks of as a, a, a comedian, a very a funny, mm-hmm. you know, the airplane movies. And remember Police Story? I, police Squad. Police Squad. Police yes. Squad. I loved, I loved Police Squad. That like, the was jokes funny. The so bad. But they were, I mean, just his deadpan delivery and Naked Gun series and all of that. If you're a Golden Girls fan, at the you know, when the series wraps, that's who Dorothy marries and, and rides off into the sunset with Leslie Nielsen. Spoiler. And he spoiler. And he I think he kind of was a prematurely gray guy, but in this movie, he's very serious. He is the captain and he's aged up. He's like they've grayed his hair. I, I think he's really good. Yeah, he's everybody's good in this. Everyone's good. I I love I mean, so it starts with uh, we're getting to know all of the characters and there's like the waves are like hitting the boat really bad. 
And so right. she, the boy is going up to the mast, like to talk to the captain when he should be in his cabin. I mean, it's obviously dangerous, but they just amuse him. And then we go and we meet Linda and Mike. Linda's in her bed and she has seasickness. And the doctor comes over and Ernest Borgnett is just screaming. Mike is screaming at the doctor. You don't know what you're doing. They have this relationship where they yell a lot, but Linda gives it back to him and calms him down. Right. Which is different from the there book is where she's... There love in this... Oh, yeah. ...relationship. Yeah. yeah. He's a cop. She was a yeah, sex you worker. Know, there's those couples... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There are these couples that are just loud. You yeah. know, that's how they communicate with each other. But they love each other at the heart of it. Like, in the book, she, it's... First of all, he's not giving anything back. She's, he's not yelling at her. In the book, she's right. only yelling at him. And there's just like no love there. She says she doesn't love him. But in the in the movie, I love that. I think I love that you have these like two really strong characters right. um, and, and they have problems, but they're, they've worked through a lot of them and they love each other very much. So I, I, I really love the way that that relationship um, was presented and without any judgment. Exactly. Like in the book. Yes. Exactly. And then we have the band where there's Noni and her brother that she's singing to. to be okay. okay. Can you so, get that song out on, of your head? Please. Because <sighs> no, it's I been, can't either. It's so first of all, it, I remember it being stuck in my head in the 70s when, when I was a child. Yes. Yeah, like, here. oh, the song. It was a very, very popular song. But so so what's her name that plays that plays Nani? Oh, or no, uh, Noni? Uh, Carol Lindley. Carol Lindley. So, so in the movie, she's practicing um, the night before the big New Year's Eve party when everything goes wrong. She's practicing with the band. She's rehearsing with the band. And her brother is in the band. And, and she's kind of singing it to her brother, which is really sweet. But apparently, like, this one person in the band was supposed to play her brother. But they were like, oh, no, they have different color eyes. So we need to have the drummer play her brother because he has the same color. Otherwise, he looks nothing like her. Nothing. And... You don't even – you never e even really see the drummer <laughs> until he's dead with his eyes closed. So who cares what color eyes he has? Do you know the guitarist is Waddy Watchell? He was Stevie Nicks' guitarist for like many, many years. He becomes a very, very famous oh. session musician. Oh. He was in all the Stevie Nicks videos. I've seen him on tour with her and all these other bands. He's super famous. But yeah, they're, they're up there playing this song. This is a song – Honest to God, you talk about like Light FM in the 70s. This would be one of those songs. Oh, it was it played everywhere. And it just, it, it's not evil, but it sticks in your head. It just it sure does. It. And I've been trying to get rid of it too. I played it really loud the other day to think I'd get it out of me, but I can't. And it won the, <laughs> I don't, I'm, I'm not kidding. I'm going crazy. But uh, it won the Academy Award, by the way. And Maureen McGovern does the version that we hear. But there's another person that's, uh, that uh, Noni is, uh, I'm sorry, Carol Lindley is lip syncing. But so they're, yeah. So, we, so they're everybody, we're getting, and then, and everyone's hot for the preacher. He's got like two hot women at the date at the, you know, they're having the, this New Whoa, Year's Eve dinner. Yeah, he's like babes. He's yeah, there's like total babes around him. And then this tidal wave hits the boat and it's great special effects. I mean, this is, you know, long it, time ago. I mean, it's really realistic. It is, and it's, it is extremely realistic. I mean, when you compare it to the other great, you know, Titanic, you know, it's Titanic's, I'm going to say it, it's not that much better. <laughs> It's not that much better. It, Sorry. There, I said it. Well, it's um, practical. It was, it's much they more. are very, very good effects. Yeah. Very well thought out. And supposedly nobody got hurt. Like the director was really good about making, uh, about safety because all the actors had to do, the actors had to do mostly their own yeah. stunts because there was a lot of close-ups. It's a small environment, but they all said it was extremely mm -hmm. safe or somehow no one got hurt. But so anyway, so the ship is flipped over and that's where we have Roddy McDowell as Acres. He's up. And that's when, so Gene Hackman is like, okay, we got to go up there and then we'll go. And that's going to make us in the bottom of the boat. And then, Ernest Borgnine's yelling like it's steel we can't go through the he's not wrong but he's yelling and it's a pretty famous scene yeah. where like they take the tr Christmas tree and bring it up to that level and then he Reverend Scott's like get up there get up that tree and then we're all gonna be okay and of course he says to 
Susan, like the pretty girls, the pretty girls, take your clothes. Yeah. Take your pants off. You got to take your skirts off. And Stella Stevens has a very famous line because she's wearing Shelly Winters. You're fine. Yeah. Shelly Winters. You keep your dress on. Shelly Stella Stevens and Linda Rogo. You need to take that dress off now. And she's of course, she's naked. And it's, it's a very famous scene. Yeah. Now the rest of us. Okay, so you get us up there. Then what? Through the kitchen. And deeper and deeper into the ship until we reach the hull. That way. Then you just kick out the bottom and you swim ashore, huh? Well, maybe you can just yell, this is the police, and it'll open right up. Don't be a smart ass. Susan, you're first. Now, you can't climb in a long gown, so it'll have to come off. Okay? Okay. I go the same way Robin did. And don't look down. Excuse me, Reverend. What about all those other people? I'll keep them moving here and see if you can get the rest of them to join us. Okay, Miss Rogo, up you go. But you'll have to take off that long gown. Like hell she will. She can't climb in at us too tight. She's got nothing under it. Just panties. What else do I need? What do you mean, what else do you need? Give her your shirt. Uh, my... Come on. Linda... Next time you put something on like I told you to put on. And they climb up there. And in the movie, the purser is there saying, I'm not leaving. I'm going to stay with these people. You're on a fool's mission. It's not safe. And Gene Hackman screaming, I'm going up there. Right after they get up there, everybody in the ballroom is killed. Like it's, it's a whole water comes through, which right. is different from the book. Very different. They all survive in the book. Yeah. Because um, the person was right, as it turns out. That's <laughs> exactly. But, but the not in the boat. movie. But, but it's a super exciting. I mean, it's so well done. Like the water flooding in and the, the guy that falls on the famous scene of the guy yep. that falls on the, the light up ceiling. And uh, it's really spectacular. I can only imagine what it must have been like seeing it in the movie theater. I mean, this is before so many things. Star Wars. Yeah. Lots of other kind of jaw, lots of other big blockbuster kind of disaster movies if you will not the star wars is a disaster movie but it's me for special effects movies yeah no it was it's uh it's, it's super exciting you know when the water floods into the ballroom like that oh there's lots of scenes like that and so they're going they're going to go up the broadway ramp to go to the top bottom excuse me but it's top now and along the way they have these series of adventures and so we have Shelley Winters who gives her life to like go underwater to save Gene Hackman and we have there's a very very famous scene where I love Linda I think she, I think Stella Stevens is oh, amazing she's wonderful she, she's a, such a good uh, performance yeah I agree her and Ernest Bargnine so they have this relationship like we said they yell at each other they make fun of each other but they love each other. They're completely there. And then, okay, spoilers, by the way, we do say spoilers. So Linda dies. And that's when Ernest Borgnine has this huge scene where he's just, Linda, Linda. Yeah. Oh, it breaks your heart. Get this one more door and we're home. There it is, Mr. Rogo. Just like I told you. Come on. The bastard was right. Linda, 
You killed her! You killed her! You killed her! You killed her! He's just totally, they commit to it. The actors totally commit to it. They treat everything as truth. And this is what's really going on. And this is how we're getting through it. And that's what makes it work. And you know what I really like? This is, a, this is again, this is not in the book at all. But a really cool choice that I think the movie made, among many cool choices that the movie made, was to have... You know, th- this preacher is like, you don't really know what's up with him. And mm-hmm. like, why is he so angry? Number one, <laughs> why is he, why he, has is no he chill. so, he has no chill whatsoever. Why is he so sure that this is the way to go? But a choice I thought was really, really awesome that I completely had forgotten about and all over, over the years was there's this, there's this whole thing throughout the, the sequence from the time that the, the boat capsizes that the little boy, Robin, who is very curious and we established early early on that he runs all over the ship and he makes friends with the crew. And that's how he gets into the captain's, uh, whatever the, you know, the the control deck. Um, so he knows that the little boy knows the ship. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of what they're doing and the directions that they they all decide to go is based on what the little boy knows, um, which I think is such a great choice. Like in the book, he dies pretty early on. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, there's nothing like that whatsoever. They're really kind of blindly going in the book. But I thought that was a really cool choice. I I agree. And I, I think it's like I said, it's very, very believable. I, I The subplot. So here's a question I have for you. So there's like, so do you believe that Red Buttons is in love with Carolyn Lee and vice versa? Do you think like Noni and James or, or are they just friends? Because <laughs> some people write Yay. that they're a couple and some people write that I they know. just have affection for each other. I mean, he's 40 years older than her. If he's a day, he's much indeed. And I, I kind of wondered about that. And, you know, it is the seventies. It would mm-hmm. not have been unusual mm-hmm. for them to, to write it that way. But in watching it again, watching it with the 21st century, eye, I thought really a lot about the very first scene where we're introduced to red buttons and he's like jogging on the ship and Shelly Winters says, you know, he is, this is a guy who is completely alone Mm -hmm. in the world. Like he really, he literally has nobody. Like he's taking care of himself and he's jogging and he's doing all this stuff to live a long time, but he doesn't really have anybody that he's living for or, you know, who's on this journey with him. So I feel very much that he, you know, here he's somebody, this time what I saw was here, he's somebody who doesn't have anybody. He's, he's, trying to push on but he really doesn't have he doesn't have a family waiting for him he doesn't have a wife he doesn't have a boyfriend or anything um and he meets noni who has just lost everything in her life Mm -hmm. so she also now has nothing and i think he just is so i sort of got it as you know i'm used to living with without anyone Mm -hmm. so i'm gonna help you through this yeah you know very much just as a friend and i didn't think that there were any moments that he would he read buttons again. I really think it's a great performance. Mm-hmm. I never got that he was playing ever that he was like into her in that way. He was just there, there for her and helping her was what I got. What did you get? No, I, I got the same thing. I always thought it was silly when people say that. I thought it was almost like father daughter like, but like you said, mm-hmm. he also was just somebody who had life experience and he probably lost people before. So he kind of understood how to take care of her. There's a lot of people that, that, you know, there's quite a few that fall by the wayside. I mean, we lose Bell and we lose Linda and we lose Acres, but Roddy McDowell. I'm spoiling everything for everybody. I mean, you think about it when they, uh, and then, um, then by the way, and then there's a great scene where Gene Hackman is sacrificing himself for the ship. He's hanging. Yeah. <laughs> and he's just like, come on, God, what do you got in you? Come on, you know. We didn't ask you to fight for us! But damn it, don't fight against us! Leave us alone! How many more sacrifices? How much more blood?
And he he lets himself, which know, is in the book, which is in the book. Yes, but uh, but it's better in the movie. Yeah, like everything else. Now, in fairness, in fairness, uh, Roddy McDowell's death is shown in the movie trailer. <laughs> <laughs> right there in the trailer. Um, so, like the second you see him, like okay, guy in the yellow jacket's not going to make it. So, I, but I, I think yeah, I think that's a great scene too with 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 Gene Hackman. Like he goes out yelling, of course. Um, but, but I do love, like he's hanging on. He's not like in the book. It's just so dumb in the book, but in the movie, like he's yelling at God. He's angry at God. Understandably at this mm-hmm. point, Linda's died. Bell's died. Acres has died. All those other people have died. Right. And he, while he's yelling at God in this moment, he is turning a valve to make it safe for everybody to get to where they can be rescued. And all that happens is like, he's holding on, but there's no place, there's no way for him to be helped by anybody. He can't be, he can't be rescued. And yet, you know, if he lets go, he's going to fall to his death. And what happens is eventually he just cannot hold on any longer. Right. And, And he drops to his death. It's just, I, I think it's great. And then, of course, once the once the they get to the hull or wherever it is, um, and the rescue team does fish them out, they we find out that they are in the movie. They are the only survivors. Yes, yes. Literally, just these six people. And it's the Germans that get them, but nobody screams at them. They just to say, "Oh, yes. thank." And and they didn't have any. But they were supposed to have like all these ships going around it to rescue them. They wanted this big scene, but they ran out of money. So they basically, like, the actors didn't even know this. Like, they just threw them on a helicopter. That just, was just one helicopter. Just one helicopter threw them all on there. They all look like, what? What do you, what? what? And they just throw them all on and then they take off. And then you think about them, like, God, all those people that died and, like, half the couples now are, are you know, widows. And I, I'm just, oh, my God. It's like a real emotional journey. And it's, they don't make them like this, right. especially with really, t- I mean, there was a Poseidon adventure that was made a few years ago, but it's like, super talented people don't do this anymore or they don't make it for them like 20 great character actors no. you know yeah they're all just really good i mean and that is what makes it so watchable and also you know just a lot of things first of all just like the big extravaganza of it is so well done mm-hmm. and even though you have like the puny little helicopter at the end i'm not mad about it yeah. it's fine you've taken me on a big fun adventure it, that's okay. But yeah, these character actors and, and, and just, just the caliber of acting is so, so good. Just, yeah, the whole thing I think is really, really, really well done. And so, I mean, so fun. It flies by. Yeah. Um, and you will never get that song out of your head. Never. I'm sorry, you guys. Yeah. If I, I it's, it's, but you can also just watch this over and over again and you discover something new each time. There's just always, yes. it's, it really has that repeatability about it. Stuff. Yeah. Indeed. And then there were all these movies, like Margot said, there was the towering Inferno and there was earthquake and there was, there was Air, uh, airport 77, then airport 79. There was all these disaster movies that came out for a while and then it kind of went away and then they came back in the nineties, but this was like the first one, I think that I can think of that was just like this huge, you know, big hit. Yeah. I think airport, I think airport came out first, but this is just like, it's on a whole, even airport was quite something, but this Poseidon is a, a, a completely different caliber of disaster movie. Like it really ups the, the bar for everything that comes after it. It's, it's terrific. Yeah. I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed the whole thing. I love the wardrobe. I love the ship design. I love all the stuff that was shot on the Queen Mary, mm-hmm. the whole thing, the Christmas tree, uh, which I think that's in the book. Yes. But I love the way that they did it in the movie. I think it was it just perfectly executed. Everything just like I, I just feel like it's so well thought out. It's so like so many details 
were were considered. And Shelley Winters. And she's so great. And she, Come on. She was nominated for an Oscar for that. And she won the Golden Globe for her performance. And she deserves it. She's really, really good. It's a it's a very compelling, you know, levels going on. So good. Funny. I just love her. Yeah. So, yeah, so movie. Movie. <laughs> Not even close. <laughs> Not even close. Not even by a long shot. Um, no, it's uh, it's definitely movie. Um, it's a great movie. It's a great movie. I wish I could say it was a great book, but sadly I cannot. No. Um, so what are we doing next? Well, so we've had a few suggestions. Um, so uh, Father of the Bride. Um, oh, yeah. Dangerous Liaisons. There was a uh, first wives club we wanted to do, uh, the ghost of Mrs. Muir. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, what is the connection between Poseidon and the ghost of Mrs. Muir? There is one. Let's see. I'm forgetting what it is. Although I'm, I, w- one thing is that I, one thing I forgot to mention uh, what that I discovered who plays uh, Mr. Rosen and who played grandpa in Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory his sister, oh, here it is. This is what it was. His sister is Maba, Mabel, Mabel Ida Albertson. And you remember Bewitched? Of course. Okay. So Darren's boss, Larry. Larry Tate. Would, Larry Tate would come over. Oh, Larry Tate's wife. She's Darren's mother. Darren's mother is Jack Albertson's sister. And she was also on The Ghost of Mrs. Muir. Oh, okay. The TV series, not the movie. That's his, that's his sister that played that played Darren's mom. Uh, who was always just confused <laughs> and had a headache. And I was she always had to be taken home. <laughs> I was just going to say, there's, there's somewhere in time. We had the perfect storm. But we've already had a disaster. Maybe we'll wait a few months for another disaster. Yeah. Oh, you know, that's one of the things I was going to say about Poseidon Adventure, and, and perhaps one of the reasons why I'm judging it so harshly, is that I, I think that The Perfect Storm is a very good book. Oh, absolutely. Um, although it's based on a, on a true story, it's a very, you know, it's a similar disaster at sea kind of story. Um, I, I think it's a much better example of that kind of genre. And it, it, I did think about it a lot reading this book, Poseidon. But maybe The Ghost of Mrs. Muir might be fun. It's, uh, I haven't seen it in ages. I have not seen it in a- ages, and it's 190 pages, so that's not too bad. Okay. That uh, seems doable. Yeah, let's do The Ghost of Mrs. Muir, the movie and the book. Great. Awesome. All right, you guys. So be sure to follow us on all the things. We have a private Facebook group. Just type in Book VS Movie Podcast Group in Facebook and ask to join. Please follow us. You know, wherever you get your podcast, be sure to subscribe. That way you'll never miss an episode. If you do, do use Apple Podcasts, if you can leave us five stars in a review, that'd be amazing. No pressure. We have a Patreon page if you want to check it out. Some of the things there are free. It's P-A-T-R-E-O-N and just look up Book VS Movie Podcast. Uh, social media, we're at Twitter, Instagram, Book Versus Movie. Our email is Book Versus Movie Podcast at gmail.com. And Margo, where can they find you? You can find me online at coloniabook.com and all of my social media callouts are at She's Nacho Mama. And where can they find you? You could find me at Brooklyn Fitchick for Twitter and Instagram. And my blog is brooklynfitchick.com. And here we go with the closing credits. It's got to be the morning after. I'm sorry. I had to do it. (laughs) Thank you so much for listening to the Book vs. Movie Podcast. We are a part of the Frolic Podcast Network. You can find more podcasts you will love at frolic.media forward slash podcasts. We follow the hashtags LadyPodSquad and Potter and Family. If you want to support the show, you can go to our Patreon page, go to P-A-T-R-E-O-N and look for Book vs. Movie Podcast. We have a basic Facebook page, but we also have a private Facebook group. Go to Facebook and type in Book vs. Movie Podcast group if you want to join that. You can follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Book vs. Movie. Spell all those words out. If you'd like to send us an email, it's Book vs. Movie Podcast. Spell that all out at gmail.com. You can follow Margot D at Brooklyn Fitchick on social media. 
and Marco P at She's Nacho Mama. Thanks so much again for checking out our show, and we'll be back soon with a new episode.